go here. Go the Oniromancy. Get our Gregory. He's going to do a lot of damage to this guy. And then we'll hit you. Want this to die. We'll hit you. And then we'll do... We're at 70 now. And now we're up to 80. And he's down to 32. So that looks pretty good. So DSE Ray and Sahir Khan. There's the Swaparoni. Sahir Khan will kill that off. Didn't really expect the Ivar in here. Fifteen damage, no problem. Can give us spying. He's like coup and stuff, probably right. But uh, we're up by was this thirty-five? We'll just hit him with this. Now we're up by like fifty-five. It's a twenty-point DAC, right? I mean, he needs another fifty-five points. I don't think it's gonna happen. There's the coup on Cyrus. Somebody's another. What is this? Thirty-four. He has no way to spend the coins. That's any good. There's a Vilga Fort, and that'll be an easy GG. Gotta kill the Cyrus. Today we're going to be playing some Fire Sworn Swarm, just because I want to use Seer Khan in it, and I think he'll go pretty well. I, I, we tried him out with Tatterwing Arrakis Swarm already. We haven't used him in the Syndicate Fire Sworn, and people want to see that, so that's what we're going to do. I will mention that I think that this deck kind of suffers against the Symbiosis meta, and the reason for that is Fire Sworn wants to do long rounds, right? If you go to a short round, Fire Sworn's already disadvantaged. If you go to fire a short round where they have a Simloss Equinox, you, you're kind of just dead. So that's unfortunate. Which means we definitely want to be playing long rounds, and I think against Symbiosis, we just all in two long rounds and hope that's good enough. But the deck still... I've used this several times. This deck's not bad. It's just watch out for those short rounds. I think people know that at this point by, about Firesworn. So let's get into the deck. We're playing Congregation. We're playing Crystal Skull on the Disciple. Really want that to stick. And then we have St. Gregory. St. Gregory's amazing. Like, if you play him round one... It's that boost for each unit you control. That's like usually like 15 or so. It usually plays for like 20. And then you get a coin. It's usually like 15 to 9 coins, which is insane. It's like 15 to 20 points and then like 9 coins. It's amazing. And then if he evolves, he goes into the form where you damage enemy by number of fire stone cards on its row. He uses like 8 damage. So your con is kind of a better version of this effect now. And anyone who's played Fire Swarm before with Gregory knows this effect can be very good. And then Sayer Collins is a better version of this. So, I'm sure he'll do well. And then we have the feed and damage it. You know, you, you boost all your fire swarms by one, damage all enemies by one. <laughs> then kills himself. So, he has really good value. I don't think it's a surprise to anybody. It's also worth mentioning his good value against Symbiosis. Because when they spawn all those little tree ants, you're not going to hit them. And then this will eventually just hit them all for good value. So, he's amazing. One of the best cards in the deck. Then we have Oniromancy. We're not playing Devotion. I, I just think Devotion... A lot of Devotion Syndicate decks, I've been saying this for a while, I just feel like Devotion Syndicate's not consistent enough. Their decks are very strong, but a lot of times just aren't consistent enough. The exception to that's Bounty, because you have Octavia, right? Octavia helps a ton in getting your good cards for Bounty decks. So, like, she gives you more consistency in Devotion Bounty, but the decks that don't run her, you just have your, pretty much just have Bank, and I just find that's not consistent enough in Devotion Syndicate. Like, they're good, but you you feel bad a lot of games because you don't have your good cards. So we're playing on Nyrancy. Then we have Cyrus, also one of the best cards in the deck. Brings back those Fallen Knights, brings back your Disciples, brings back your Priests, brings back the Scribes, all the good stuff you want. If the opponent doesn't kill Cyrus, you, round, like if you go round one, then play Cyrus round two, and they don't kill it, you kind of just win most of the time. But he's only a three with one armor, so usually he does die, and you usually get one card back from him. Then we have the Heat Wave. Like we're playing on Nyrancy, so you put the Heat Wave in just for removal. Um, you could swap this for something else if you want, but I don't, I just think Heatwave is very good. It's very useful. Um, I have seen some cultist decks lately, not that we have good matchup there because we can't really kill the deacons, but so just like things like that, where they have a scenario you want to deal with Heatwave's great. It's also really good against, it's like tall things and like Madoc, if the people are playing bombs to deal with Elven Seers and stuff, although that doesn't really work because of Equinox with 
the uh, sim loss is so big in around three and the bombs don't really have points but i'm just saying like this heat waves has a lot of uses i'm sure you all know that then we have grand inquisitor elvid he is amazing he's extra amazing if you have a scribe out and he just gives you all your little dudes and you know how it works he just spawns all the guys i don't think i've explained this fire sworn's not that complicated then you have ds e ray it's fantastic if you're in, a, you're in a long round where it gets good value otherwise not so much but the three damage can be useful as well sometimes there are some cards that come down at three that you want to kill um say the opponent's playing symbiosis and they go with their bountiful harvest and they create the, the the lady with the pipe that's a three you can kill it with that but there are some things you can kill a three but not many usually it's just a value card it is good value though sacred flame pretty similar good value I kind of wish this had resilience on it, but I guess it's not a location. It's just a fire sworn. But I kind of wish this was a, was a location with resilience. But I guess they don't want to do that. Then we have Lady of the Lake. We're playing Lady of the Lake because we have two, we have two uh, echo cards, and we want more consistency. So we played Lady of the Lake. That's what this comes down to. With decks that play two echo cards, I think it's a lot of time good to include Lady of the Lake. So that's why we did that. We want to make sure we get the own Iron Man. We want to make sure we get that DSA Ray, E Ray, because they're both really good cards, and make sure we can uh, actually win our long rounds when we play them. Then we got the Sayer Khan. We mentioned him. He's got great, great effect. Does a lot of damage uh, against stuff that kills all your guys off. I think, like, if you're playing against a bomb deck or something, you're going to just to kill all your fire swarms. It's not great, but most of the time you can get good value off of this. And then we have um, <laughs> Discount. We recall this Fallen Knight, or uh, Van Hurst, or uh, Cyrus, because those are the cards you usually make off of this. If you just hit a token, you make Fallen Knight, or you can make um, Procession. Usually Fallen Knight's good early round, Procession's later in the round, and in the middle you have Roderick if you need him. But usually you want to try and hit an 8, because if you hit an 8, you can make a second Cyrus, and that's amazing. And the best thing to hit with it is usually this Inquisitor, because he goes up to 8 when he destroys a guy. So if you can do this and then hit it with this and make a second Cyrus, it's amazing. But if you just have like a four, which a lot of units are, Von Hurst is pretty good because you can just keep getting more zealots. Although he's only a five, so he dies quite a bit. Um, you can also make at eight you know, Lebioida, but that one's more situational. But yeah, this is this is just great. And then we have the Fallen Knights. We have Excommunication. I've seen people not play Excommunication, and I'm not sure what's up with that i think losing the token for the top three is really worth it like people play people play a magic compass for the second effect but the first effect's not bad and people play that and this doesn't discard the cards although that has skelega synergy but i think this is just really useful just to dig through your deck and find your cards then we have the two scribes scribes give you coins we don't have candle or any really big fee cards i used to run candle in this but i found there weren't a lot of coins so this is just here mainly for the spawn effect. We're not going to be tributing often unless we know that they're playing four damage. Like if they're like Ren free vampires or something, we know they have a toad prince. We might do the tribute, but otherwise we'll probably just leave it. And then we have the one cleric. There's just five provisions left. So I picked a five provision card to put in the deck. You can kind of pick any of them, but I think cleric makes the most sense. Um, although where is he? Not you. The Keeper of the Flames not bad either. It's just we usually don't have enough coins to do the tribute. Otherwise, we'd include them. Then we have the Congregation. It's great for spawning guys. We've got the Priest. Discount. Fallen Knight. The Inquisitor, we mentioned. We are running one Squirrel. There's a four person slot here. This can be like a Peller. It can be a Spores. If you want to really lean into the anti-tall like tall boost effects. But we're just gonna go with a simple squirrel and we have two disciples so that is the deck pretty straightforward fire sworn stuff should be pretty fun hopefully we don't play too much like aoe damage but uh we'll see what we run into let's go find out so it looks like we're going against inspired zeal i've seen a fair bit of mages lately we also made our own mage deck well <laughs> now we know it's not mages it's gonna be a muta generator deck for sure uh, no, we don't want to click any of that. There's a guaranteed Muta Generator deck. That's probably bad. Uh, let's see here. We definitely need Fallen Knights. Probably need Scribe. This is not the best card here. Really looking for our big cards like Gregory and stuff. That's pretty good. So, no fours means it's definitely Muta Generator. 
Uh, we do have a Heat Wave in case he goes for a Rafar's Vengeance. Nice. Well, you all know the best play to do against Muta Generator. Muta Generator, right? You just get rid of it. No Defender on that Muta Generator. Usually you don't see it, so... That kind of... Really good we drew that. Uh, what do we want to open with now? What do we want to open with now? This is definitely going to die to Reinforce Ballista. There's a chance this one doesn't die. I'd rather chance it and then when this is used up, go with the Fallen Knight. Back to the dust whence it came. So it's got three damage now as well. That can kill this. Maybe we don't care and we just play this anyway. Kind of care though. Let's play this. It's possible we can go for a Cyrus this round. We can go for the Inquisitor and then play this on the Inquisitor. Oh, he went for the kill on the Priest instead. Interesting. Left, right, left. Let's play our Fallen Knight here. He's getting a lot of points ahead of us, but we can go for a long round three. Give what we, demand, not harm a hair on your wench's head. we can always get like, one of our bigger cards here. I don't think he'll pass. Okay. That is a card we want to DAC, Ray. For three damage. The question is, is it worth doing that right now? We don't have many guys out. I think what we'll do is we'll spawn a guy here. He gets a coin. We can spawn a guy here. That's six cards. It's not the worst DAC, Ray. Then this will get the death blow effect. So I think this is worth doing. It's not a great DAC ray, but I think just killing off the scout's worth it. Especially if we can win the round, because he has no muta generator carryover. Also made this a four instead of a three. Pretty relevant because reinforced ballista. It's gonna kill that. I'm gonna kill that. Let's play this. I want to make a Cyrus. We don't. We do not have to win this on even. But okay, there's another five. Let's play the scribe. Give us a coin here. Without the muta generator, he just loses so much stuff. Okay, so we could make the Cyrus. We could go for a card out of our deck. We could Oniromancy something. I think the Oniromancy makes the most sense here. Because what we want to do is play this next round, I think. You know, long round's better for us, but it might be better for him if he's playing Siege. If he's playing Siege and all that good stuff, then it's definitely better for him. I think we just do this. You are not worthy of the fire's purity, not worthy of its light. And then we do need to spawn another guy, unfortunately. Because then he gets one, death. two points here. Maybe we do this round. The Siege is a scary card. With only five cards in the round, I'm not feeling too great about it. Like, we knew we were drawing these guys, though. So the only thing we do we Oniromancy Cyrus. And that's pretty much every good card in our deck. Is that worth going for? It might be. Yeah, I think it is. He should have some difficulty actually killing a Cyrus on his first turn. He should have some trouble killing this on his first turn. The eternal fire. Yes, you have you made your offering. Let's go with the fallen knight. How low we have fallen. Yeah, good, we get two Cyruses off. Definitely worth it then. 
What's he want to use the order for? It means he's a bad hand if he's doing that. You can bring back Scribe, Disciple, or Inquisitor. Scribe is really tempting considering we have this guy in our hand. This could make another Fallen Knight. Let's do this. We'll make a Fallen Knight off of this. Let's spawn a dude here. Let's replace this with a scribe. We'll go like this. He has to kill Cyrus. Be a lanch next. Or a reaper dude. Uh, we got, what, three damage on you? It's not enough. Gonna zeal it to make another one of those. It's not a soldier, buddy. That doesn't work. So what do we want this time? Probably a disciple to spawn or a priest, because we're going to have plenty of spawning of our own. Bring a priest back. If they don't kill Cyrus, you can do insane stuff. And then we've got you. Yes, you. Have you made your offering? Yeah. Looks pretty good. Pretty good. Here's the reinforcements. It's gonna kill the scribe. We can bring the scribe back. We've got six damage here, so we can kill this off. Eternal fire. So this goes down, we can hit this. It'll do one damage to everything. 45 point advantage here. We'll DS E Ray on the Ballista. Citron Royal Guards? Serving. Yeah, there they are. This is more value because it'll ping twice. Let's see what he's got. Yep, there's the GG. I thought going for it round two would be the choice. Not having the Muter Generator makes so much difference. And Slave will be kind of a problem. They can seize our Fallen Knights and they do spawn some guys. Sometimes. Usually they don't play Blightmaker anymore, but they used to Blightmaker, which would give them two spawns. Or one spawn, I mean. And they can seize our stuff. Do we want Squirrel? He's playing Coup, we do. This is a key card. Drawing LV is super important. So is drawing both Fallen Knights, which we did. Sayer Khan. Just drawing the cards is super important because it means he can't uh, Torres them into his deck. We don't care so much about this one. On the whole, this hand's actually quite good. Most likely he's going to hang this and then seize it for round one when on even. There's not much we can do about that. We want to try, around, try and have him not kill off our Fallen Knights. Well, especially not seize the Fallen Knights, but he will. There's Eon. Fine. You can go with a Scribe here. Let's go with the scribe. It'll give us coins back. It's gonna die to attorney joust or something, but at least it gives us one coin this way. And then the joust is one less thing he has for like a priest or a knight. It's in slave five, so this could be the shoop deck, in which case there's less damage. It's probably the Shoop one, then. I've also seen in Slave 6 with 26 cards for Shoop, and I think that's not good. I just don't think that's worth it. I'm wondering if he's going to pass here. If yeah, there's a turning Joust on himself, that's... 
interesting to say the least. We've got the Inquisitor. We also go the Fallen Knight here. He's at Enslave 5, so if we just do a one leader charge, we'll actually get out of C's range. Or we can just go with the Inquisitor. The Inquisitor will spawn it for us. We don't have to worry about that. <laughs> just boosting this guy. Let's see. What? Is there a reason he could be boosting this? I mean, he could be going for like a... Uh, some kind of scam with the guy who swaps powers, but I don't see why you do that on Yan. I think he's just playing the cards to pass here. I think he's just playing cards to pass. We could excommunication. Get a bronze. I think I like that plan. I curse your name. I damn your Let's play the congregation here. Now we know what we're drawing to. Those are some good draws. Have you made your offering? I imagine he passes here. I'd find it very weird if he didn't. Okay, he didn't. Uh, well, I guess we do play one of these then. And we'll just use one of these. I just want to make sure he doesn't seize it. Because we want to bring it back with Cyrus. Now he's going to pass. He still has his Shoop. So if we, whatever he opened with could die to Shoop. That is worth keeping in mind. Until we get past 13 points, whatever we open with could die. I think we keep this hand though. It's it's a good hand. Yes, yeah, begin like this. Gradeo will give him the lock too, probably. We went first. We don't know what his starting stratagem is. There's the rune mage, getting that shoop ready. Probably looking for anything that does damage. Or locks. It's quite a few of those. Um, this could also give him several damage specials. Alright, there we go. Okay, another turn of Disciple. Do we want a Cyrus? Or we want a Fallen Knight. I think we want a Fallen Knight. Let's get him to six. It's out of range of this enslave. Well, not out of range of that though. That's unfortunate. Is it time for a Cyrus? I think it is. The eternal fire lights our way. Yes, you have you made your offering. Still this Fallen Knight, at least. Make him a 6 also. Give space for Helvede ranged. So we can go and make a Scribe, then spam everything out. I'm going to seize a Zealot. Interesting. That doesn't make any sense to me. Why not see Cyrus? I have to kill the Cyrus. I don't know what's going on here. And when you don't know what's going on, like I always say, you just keep playing cards and try and win the round. All right, what do we want on Iron Man? So we have DS E-Ray, which we get off of Lady of the Lake. We don't have to worry about that. We can go with this to have an eight. Can we get an eight? Not conveniently. We'd have to destroy Fallen Knight. I don't want to do that. So that's not the best thing. It's probably gonna be Sahir Khan later in the round. Considering we're doing that, I think we just go in here with Elvid now. The 
It's a shame we don't get a scribe, but this should give us a lot of value. You know, DS E Ray probably next. And then we have Gregory. I don't think he's gonna have any row damage. So we just spam out our points now. Got seven. We might as well Gregory. The righteous will we want to leave something at three to get more value from TAC Ray. And this will go up to three when he plays another card. Vilga Forts. It's good value for him. Now we're going to go in here with our DAC Ray, and I think we kill this guy off. It'll probably get more value from assimilating. 65. And he's just going to leave. G, G. Double cross. Curious to see what this is. You don't see that much assimilate or pure assimilate anymore. This is a good card to have because it's our Oniromancy. We are a little short on spawning here. We really need this guy to live. I guess with Crystal Skull, it's a decent chance. Let's try and find our Cyrus though. Can't wait. You know, Yon's like in every deck. Wish we had a scribe here. See if we can get a removal onto this guy and then play a Fallen Knight. He might just pass here, though. Go lock. We want to get our own Nyromancy out here. I don't Nyromancy Scribe. Feels not great though. We can make a Roderick if we need more coins. Right, for now, we'll just play Fallen Knight, I think, and do a leader charge. You really want to win this round one. Then bleed is round two. You know, the standard stuff. I think we go with one of these guys here. I guess he's gonna pass. He might not, but I think he will. Another lock coming in. That's two so far. We could make a Cyrus, but that doesn't really do much for us. I think we will make a Roderick. Get more coins. Each coin's worth a lot here. It's worth three, because we get two points from this, and then one off of the Fallen Knight. So every turn the Roderick lives is at three points. Okay, good. Eight cards here for round three. I guess it could be Shoop Double Cross. Never know. 
I've seen a lot of shoop lately. Like a lot, lot of shoop. Um, what are we missing here? We own Iromancy off of you. We're missing Cyrus. So we don't Iromancy Cyrus. Oh no, we have Cyrus. What am I talking about? Gregory. Gregory. That's a really good hand. The thing is, do we think we can do this round? If he's playing Shoop, we just get blown out by this. But he hasn't played a Rune Mage, so... Probably worth going for. Bring back Fallen Knight. Go from there. Seems like a decent play. See what he's gonna do. He has to kill Cyrus. There's no way he doesn't kill Cyrus. He's playing tactics. Do I enjoy torture? Okay, he didn't kill Cyrus. Consider me corrected. We have to watch out for him stealing our heat wave. We should be scribe. But I mean, there's, we definitely go second Fallen Knight here. We definitely bring this back to spawn a guy. I guess he wants to coup the Cyrus. This says fire sworn, not non neutral. Guess that makes sense for him to do this then. Guess that makes sense. Oh, there's Gregory. There's the scribe. We take the scribe, I think. We make a guy. What can we get off of Cyrus? Several good things. First, though, first we do this. It's not coin. And then we can do this. Let's go with. Let's go with the priest. Just another engine. Then LV is gonna be amazing. Here comes the Cyrus. We're gonna wanna play this Heat Wave out of our hand and the Sayer Khan out of our hand. This is only Fire Sworn, so we can't get anything back. Do this here. We want to go with the Cyrus. We definitely want to play our Heat Wave. We don't want him double crossing it. We can't generate more coins without Elvide. But I think it's worth doing this to get one of these guys. The can conceal the truth. The eyes never. And say here Khan's the next card we want to get rid of. And then he'll have to choose between these. LV will be really good, but we want to get rid of that Fallen Knight. Oh, he's double-crossing us now, isn't he? He's double-crossing us for LV for sure. Or DAC Ray makes sense, too. Okay, now we can be a little more more tactical about how we play our cards. Three, seven. We've got ten. This kills off something. If we do this... Get more value if we wait, though. The thing is, we could bring back with Cyrus. We get this guy back. Let's do. Let's do this. You will answer my questions. Then I will tear out your you. Yes, you. Have you made your offering? We'll just spawn all the guys. Then we have Gregory, Sayer Khan, DAC, right? It's gonna be some insane value coming down here. So take RLV, that's fine. What do we do with our two coins here? We can bring this back. We won't get any more coins. 
I think we go with the Gregory. Let's go here. With the Oniromancy. Get our Gregory. He's gonna do a lot of damage to this guy. And then we'll hit you. Want this to die. We'll hit you. And then we'll do... We're at 70 now. And now we're up to 80. And he's down to 32. So that looks pretty good. So DSE Ray and Sahir Khan. There's the Swaparoni. Sahir Khan will kill that off. Didn't really expect the Ivar in here. Fifteen damage, no problem. We get two extra points on DSE Ray if we death blow. Three extra because we have the Duchess Informant and these two. I'm amazed he did not kill our Cyrus. By the way, the Cyrus gave us so much value. Can give us spying. He's like coup and stuff, probably, right? But uh, we're up by, what is this, 35? We'll just hit him with this. Now we're up by like 55. It's a 20 point DAC, Ray. I mean, he needs another 55 points. I don't think it's going to happen. There's the coup on Cyrus. Some of another, what is this, 34? He has no way to spend the coins. That's any good. There's a Vilga Fort. And that'll be an easy GG. Gotta kill the Cyrus. Vampires can. Ooh, they can probably out engine us. We're gonna need to damage cards, get rid of Flutters. And just hope he doesn't have a round one Flutter. I think Flutter gets more value. I've done this matchup from the other side a couple times with vampires, but not Ren for vampires, just. Um, non run free vampires I used and it usually seems like there's enough value in the vampires to outvalue the engines unless you can get like multiple fallen knights we don't have Ulrich I'll talk about why I don't have Ulrich in a minute but we need a scribe we have a scribe I like having two of these so they're really good put this back second scribe probably not so the reason we don't have Ulrich is we're not in Devotion and it's really expensive. Basically went with the Lady of the Lake instead. Sometimes I click... <laughs> this is just random. Sometimes I click the Crystal Skull on this guy before his order. Sometimes I click his order first. Not sure why. There's a Necrot. So we could remove these tokens. Just going with the Scribe. I would really like to dodge a Toad Prince. It doesn't cost us a lot to do that. So I guess we won't. Because we'd have to tribute two, which means we need three coins, which means we need two leaders. And that's too much. He's got a dude anyway. At least we got one coin out of it. Get a Fallen Knight going. It's not bad to play one, because we can always revive it. Where's the Flutters, what I want to know. Okay, so it's going to be Renfrew Vampires. I'm sure that shocks everybody. We're missing coin generation. It happens a lot with this deck. We really need the Scribes. Round 1 Gregory gives you coins if you need it. We can excommunicate these once they're bleeding. I think we'll go with a Disciple first, though, and just do this. It's bleeding all of our tokens. Do this here. Ooh, we've got... Congregation's good. Flame's also good. Let's go with the flame. Remove his cowl, then his ears. We might own Iromancy a congregation. 
for a second scribe. We'll see what he plays here. I kind of want to own Iron Master the scribe. Because it's continuous generation for the rest of the round. Okay, that is a problematic card. Very problematic. Because now we don't want to play the Oniromancy. It basically forces us to play Seer Khan, I think. Can't let that go. And then we'll click this. So we don't need to play another card to win the round. We're taking eight or seven bleedings there. There's the Renfries gang. I think we do Oniromancy here for the scribe. Where's the scribe? So we need to get a little bit further ahead because of the meteor shower. And there's the pass. So we have Oniromancy, we have Lady of the Lake. Meteor shower is scary. But Regis is smaller the earlier we can force it out. And Renfrey just doesn't have very good consistency. These are all things to keep in mind. Can't draw that because we need to play with Lady of the Lake. Cyrus, get Toad Prince. Uh, we'd only have one of these. But if we can like save Gregory, Gregory gives us a reasonable round three. That's short. It's our best short round card. What would we bring back with you? Probably the guy who spawns dudes. I wonder if we can bait a Toad Prince. I don't really want to bait a Toad Prince. I just want him to not have Toad Prince, if we're being honest. We'll play this ranged. Just in case we did, do get enough time to get a scribe back. Go with the Fallen Knight. Might as well. We've got two leader spawns. We can get LV'd. It's probably worth doing this. Just in case we decide to go for it. No Toad Prince. Not gonna let us get it back range. That's smart. We still want these guys though. We want those guys. So we play another Fallen Knight. <laughs> the mouse is really wandering there. We'll leave space for Helvede. So we'll go here. Get one of these guys back. Or get Scribe. Now we go with one of these. Cyrus is not dead. And when Cyrus isn't dead, you can do some crazy stuff. Alright, we're definitely going to go for a Scribe here. So we want to get coins. We're going to double leader to get coins. Because this goes melee. We're going to be short on coins anyway, though. Well, Vid would give us coins, so let's go here and get the scribe. He might Toad Prince it anyway. Get a coin this way. From the spawning. Let's do this first. This of we ran out of things to bring back with Cyrus anyway. Now we have more space for LV to go for him. We're in danger of an Igni. That is something we have to keep in mind. There he is. Still up in points though. Elvite's still really good. The amulet. Then it will sell. Remove his cowl, then his ears. That one. He venerates. We still have this into DAC, right? 
It's kind of hard to split the Fallen Knights, though. I guess we should have played the one melee. I think we're just trying to save space for Elvid. We've neglected the fact that he's going to have this. Really hope he doesn't get the one that just one damage to everything. Oh, he did get it. That's really bad. It negates this DAC ray completely, pretty much. We lose six tokens. Nothing to, nothing else for it anyway, though. Let's make him play another card. This Regis wins the game. Oh, he played the Regis. Uh, what is he? Ow, hit my knee. I wonder if you heard that. Ow. Anyway, I wonder if um, he has Morvid or something. What this card could be. It's probably Morvid. We can't beat a Morvid. Oh, we can if we Heat Wave it. We need... What do we need here? We need, like... Uh, uh we, need a, we need magic. Need some magic. This isn't looking like magic. That's good. It doesn't really matter if it's good or not. I kind of figured we could go for the round two just because of how inconsistent Renfrey is. He played zero consistency cards, but he just... I mean, he played a Renfrey's gang, that's it. But he drew all his stuff pretty much. It's unfortunate. I wonder what his last card is. He was Operator. No, it was Morvud. That's what it was. He just drew... He just had the cards. That's unfortunate. If he didn't have the Igni, we would have won. If we played around the Igni, we probably would have won too. But that one's on us. This is probably good old Beast Skellige. Again, the short rounds are not our strong suit. Not our strong suit. That's nice. We have two fallen knights. This is two fallen knights with this is good. And we're a little short on spawning guys though. Put you back. Put you back. I think getting the spawning is more valuable. This could be raids, by the way, not beasts. Raids would be more annoying. Because we're very engine dependent. Sometimes I play both. I'm giving this like a 3% chance of living. Yeah, there it goes. See what, see what we can do with the Fallen Knight here. He's probably also dying. Well, he didn't die instantly. So that's an improvement. That is an improvement. So we could go flame. I like flame. It's pretty good here. Yes, you. Have you made your offering? At four, he might kill it, but I'm kind of don't really want to use a leader charge at this point in case he passes. Go to the congregation. Just do this now. I want him to leave the round. We're up by 21. There it is. And let's we'll see what we can do in this round here. He hasn't shown much, but I'm pretty sure it's raids, and he just didn't get access to a Highland Warlord. It was unlucky for him. But I think that's what's going on. Like our Cyrus. Uh, do we want a squirrel? If he starts boosting something in his graveyard, we kind of do want a squirrel. But then again, it might just we might just want to go value. Okay, we can't have you and DAC Ray in our hand. 
Let's see, we want Cyrus. Do we just own Iromancy Cyrus? I think we just own Iromancy Cyrus. If this guy's playing Beast, he has no setup. If he's playing Raids, he has no setup. So, pushing here, I think, makes a lot of sense. And there he goes. As we all knew would happen. A little short on spawning. Let's go with a scribe. And let's withhold this. Spawn a dude. Alright, so he's played what? This, this, this. I don't think he has another 5 damage easy, easily accessible. I don't think you keep two stunning blows in your hand. There's the first Highland Warlord. There's the first one. Let's go with this guy. Nobody expects the position. Now I kind of do want to go up for another Fallen Knight charge. Or another health in the Fallen Knight. Now he's at one more reach on his four damage cards. The best thing we could do is get Helvede off of Excommunication once we play our second Fallen Knight. I think we're, I think we're just going to all-in him this round. I don't really want to deal with the Sove and Tear and such. I'm going to kill a token off. That's fine. Like, I think we just all-in him because his setup was really bad round one. The thing is the Sove and Tear is so many points still. Do this. Make sure it goes to six. We can also we could also ideally find this card too. What just happened? I wasn't looking. Champion's charge? Yeah, there it is. Wait, what do you hit with that? I don't remember what he hit. Second fallen knight with six damage is what it was. So I think we go here. See if we can find something good. This is pretty good. You over profit, but we get a full row of dudes. Normally, full row is not great because we want to play um, Gregory on it, but he's going to empty that row a little bit for us, most likely. We have DS E Ray coming in here. Let's do that now. Make him do that, Sove and Leader. We can probably heat wave the leader. Oh, Gregory here. It's not a great Gregory. It's not too bad either, though. It's not great because we don't do too much damage on the deploy. Unfortunately, we had coins, but he, he's just going to give up. All right, we'll take the value. I mean, we had coins, which is very inefficient, but we can't actually spend them. But I guess that's just too much. So that's the deck. I, I like Firesworn. Having the access to Sahir Khan is super helpful. Because you against tall decks, like uh, say Equinox for example, you can get insane value off the deploy. Like You can hit like 16 damage off of this and it's 18 for 8. That's pretty good. And then you can also just remove dangerous engine stuff. Okay, you play like a Flutter or something, it's like a 7. Usually you can kill that off relatively early in the round if you have like Congregation or Cyrus or Leaders and things. So he's really helpful to the deck. It's very similar to um, Gregory. When, when Gregory came out, like a big deal was it was the first Fire Sworn card that really gave you control, right? Because as this damage enemy you num enemy unit by number of Fire Sworn cards on this row, it was like a big deal that Fire Sworn had access to this damage. And say here, Khan just like gives you a better version of that. It's not as good as Gregory overall, but like that effect, that part of the effect's better. So that's really nice to have say here, Khan. In the deck as well. I, d I really like having Lady of the Lake for the Oniromancy DIC Ray. I, like I said, I've played Devotion Fire Sworn and it just never feels consistent enough. But I think this really helps with the consistency. Then having Heat Wave for things like, um, was it the first game we banished a Muta Generator? Just Heat Wave just gives you, if you don't have Heat Wave, sometimes there's things you can't beat. That's just like a risk you have to run. Um, we did actually sacrifice the Ulric for this. I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video. But Ulric. 
I have played Ulrich in non-devotion before, just because getting in the extra Fallen Knight's super good. But I think the Fallen Knight's not worth losing out on one of these high provision cards. So that one's up to you. If you want to run Ulrich, you can. You can like cut Heat Wave, or you could cut, um, or you can go like Devotion with him in it. If you're playing Devotion, you definitely run Ulrich. It's just, it's just too good not to, with the plus two on it because it gets you out of most removal range. But I think, I think the non-Devotion is the way to go, just because Sayer Khan is so good. I think you definitely want Seer Khan in the deck, and then you probably want the Oniromancy too, so. With DAC Ray and Oniromancy, I really like Lady of the Lake, so that one's up to you. If you don't like Lady of the Lake, I guess you can cut her. But she's really helpful at getting you consistency cards like Oniromancy, like getting your DAC Ray, so you get the value for playing it with the Echo. As far as the changes in the bronzes, like I said, you can swap Squirrel out for four fishing card if you want. I like having the Priest. The Cleric's fine. Um, it's just usually a lack of coins. If we had more coins, Keeper of the Flame, I think, would be the way to go for that row boost. But usually we just don't have coins. Now, if you want to put cards that give you coins in, there's there are cards that give you coins, by the way. <laughs> We're not crafting this since we make a deck with it, and I haven't found a deck I think works with it yet. So this is still remaining uncrafted. I haven't been able to theory craft a deck. I think that works in yet, but we'll get there. Um, this way I don't forget. As far as the rest of the cards that give you profit, like, you could put a profit card in. Like, Smuggle is most likely the one you'd go with, because it gives you a footman, which synergizes with the deck, and it gives you three coins. So you could play Smuggle. Uh, maybe over the Priest, if you don't like having the Priest. Or over the Squirrel, if you don't think you need the Banish. So if you need more coins, I think Smuggle's where you'd look to. Although, this guy does give you three coins. You don't have to, you don't have to use the Tribute. So you can just use this guy for three coins, which is part of the reason why I picked him. But just not having access to coins is one of the weaknesses and then not having a good way to spend them, right? The only way to spend your coins, well, you can spend them with Gregory, but that's really inefficient. The only efficient way to spend your coins is to transform with this guy, which is another reason I included him. But not the most consistent thing, and it's not a great spend. It's like one for one. So usually you just want to be spending to get yourself tokens. It's just the one, if your deck is working how you want it to, with like scribes on the board and you're spawning a bunch of stuff, then you end up with extra extra coins. There's not really a good way to use them. So that is where like a cleric can come in handy. But you can also run candle, because candle solves two of those problems, right? It gives you coins, it gives you protection for your engines. Like you can just play candle, get four coins. Then when you play your scribe, you just hit it with a candle boost and it's a six. So candle fits quite well in the deck. Candle is really good in the deck. I just had it in the deck before and I wanted to try it without it. Because I wasn't sure if we felt like we needed it or not. It's pretty helpful for protection. Like I think I would try to fit the candle back in. It's just what would you take out for it? Because that's, that's the question. Right? You can cut this. Then you need a six. This makes Cyrus, so we definitely want to keep this. This makes Cyrus Fallen Knight and good stuff. So I think you'd have to cut like Lady of the Lake or Heat Wave for the candle. And I didn't really want to, but if you, I think the candle is really good. If you can find space for the candle, like for example, if you don't like Lady of the Lake, just play the candle. The candle's really good. But anyway, that's the deck. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It worked out pretty well. Um, we didn't run into too many bomb players today. Bomb's kind of our nemesis because the Cataclysm starts killing off all the tokens. They bomb all of your engines and it's just a huge pain, but that's like one problem. The other one is Symbiosis, if you ever get to that short round with the, um... What's it called? The equinoxes. You're in trouble, but usually you can win the round one. Aquan makes it a little hard, but usually if you have fallen knights, you can win that round one and go to a long round two or three, whichever one you want to go with. So you have a chance there. You just don't want to go to a short round three in general with the deck. If you do end up having to go to a short round three, like you know you're going to go to a short round three, uh, LV is your best card probably to save. But hopefully it doesn't come to that. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know what other decks you want to see, and we'll see you next time. That'll be it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more. And you can check out some more videos over here. And thanks for watching.